Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be doing a comparison between all of these new LDA RC aka King Kong Tiny Whoop style aircraft. Now this isn't going to be a full review of all of them because I've already done a full review of the Tiny 6 X. This is going to be a video to see which one is the best out of all of them and the components are very similar the only thing that really changes is the size of course and also the size of the motors and the battery and also the weight I believe the flight controller is the same the camera is the same and the VTX is the same so I've actually been sent the basic version of the Tiny 7 and the Tiny 8X. Confusingly, the Tiny 7 has got 8mm motors and the Tiny 8 has got 8.5mm motors. And as I say, they've just come in these boxes. The basic version, you don't get a lot, so you get a high volt charger with a little switch on it there you just get the one battery and this is the XM version for free sky but you can see we've got other receivers here such as DSM2 you've got no RX there the fly sky one as well so we have got the manual as well but that's all that you get with the basic version and again I'll link to my review of the advanced combo version because you get this tub and a battery charger and spare batteries and all sorts of things there but like I say this is just a comparison between the performance of these three and I might actually throw in this one as well this is the Ishin QX65 and it's a very similar spec to the rest of them the difference being that this one has got six millimeter motors it's a little bit cheaper than all of them and it also has the B core V2 so this one's got an on-screen display the rest of these have not so the tiny 6x has got a 250 milliamp battery the Tiny 7X has got a 450 milliamp battery. This one I thought was interesting because it's got its 2 millimeter connector on a wire there. And then the 8X has got a 550 milliamp battery. Again, all high volt. And this one, again, has got the connector attached to the battery there on this little plastic housing. So, yeah, there are slight differences. And, of course, we have the size as well. You can see they get progressively bigger so you know as we get towards this end here it's going to be more difficult to do tiny whooping indoors you know getting through the little nooks and crannies in the house and this one is going to be the best for that but with this one having the bigger motors we will see whether it has got more performance when it comes to punch and also look at the flight time and the different weights as well
so there were actually some really interesting results there. Some couldn't be seen on camera and others could. The first one that I thought was interesting was the flight time of the QX65. It was considerably shorter than the rest of all these models and that's interesting because this guy is the lightest, it's got the smallest motors and the battery size is the same as the Tiny 6X so it's a 250 milliamp high volt battery yet it only had a two and a half minute flight time all of these were very close to each other actually just maybe 10-20 seconds between them and almost a four minute flight time and over a four minute flight time with this one and I think the reason the flight time is shorter with this guy is because of the on-screen display now when I go back to when I used to build brushed micros before all of these ready-to-fly models were available I did try to add an on-screen display to a couple of them and when I did that it did greatly reduce the flight time so maybe there's something in this not adding an on-screen display to a tiny whooper because it seems like you get a longer flight time if you don't have one so there is a trade-off with that so when it comes to which is the best out of these it's not as straightforward as I thought it was going to be. You see, if you are looking for a tiny whoop for indoors, I think it's going to be this one as the winner, just because it's got the 7mm motors, so it's got more performance than the 6mm motor tiny whoopers out there. It's got a good flight time, and it's going to get into all the really tight spots that you can get into when flying indoors. That being said, when I flew it outdoors, it didn't quite have enough punch to do acro and FPV and on the descent there was quite a few wobbles and it struggled to recover so I think for indoors these two yeah they're going to be the best and for performance it's this one but if you want an on-screen display then it's gonna be this one something I don't like about this one though is every time you crash the motors lift up out of these holders here of course you could secure that down but it was just a, a pain to do that every single time of course with this one you can adjust the camera angle as well so you know that might be a plus point I think what would be the perfect tiny whoop is to take the motors and the frame of this one and then put the B core in there the problem with doing that though is the flight controller has its VTX built into it. So if you did want to swap it over, you'd have to get an all-in-one camera or a separate VTX, and I think that would be a pain and, and it would add weight as well. So I think this one is my favorite one overall, and I could maybe modify it, like I say, put a different flight controller, different camera, etc. And I think indoors, at least, this would be the best. Now, these two really surprised me because when I took them outside and did the punch test, they had more punch than this guy. You couldn't really see it on the camera though, but what happened was when I came off the throttle with these, there was enough power to have a nice descent and they never really wobbled at all. And again, you might think, well, what's the difference between these two then? And I think this one, this one has the ability to have more power so you can fly it nicely outdoors, but it's also small enough to be in with these guys. Of course, you know, you only need a millimeter's difference to crash or make it through like a tight spot. So, you know, again, these guys are going to be better. But I think this one here actually is in the middle in that you could fly it indoors and outdoors and have a great overall performance. And then with this guy, this one was the most stable out of all of them. It had the most power, it had the longest flight time, but with it being much bigger, you would need bigger gaps indoors to fly through. So again, it depends on your situation. You know, if you're not trying to get in the smallest of gaps and you want more performance for flying outdoors and you want to fly indoors, then maybe this guy is for you. So yes, I'm afraid it's not as clear cut as I thought it was going to be. There is no, yes, this one is the best. I think, you know, short answer would be, this one's the best for indoors, this one's the best for indoors and outdoors, and this one is the best for 
outdoors. And there you go, that is my conclusion. I hope it was helpful. All of the cameras are pretty much the same, you know, they're a CMOS camera, so they're not the best quality, but they are fine for whipping about. So I will put a link in the description to all of these models, and as I say, I did a full review on this guy and a full review on this guy, so I'll link that in the below as well. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.